Hello, and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering Genesis 39 through 40 and Matthew 11. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation so that the reading of your Word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world in Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Genesis 39 Now, Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph, so that he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted him to, to his care for everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessings of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the fields. So Potiphar left everything in the hand, everything that he had in Joseph's care, with Joseph in charge. He did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was a well-built and handsome young man, and after a while his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns he entrusts to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by the, his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, she said to them, this Hebrew has been brought to us to make sport of us. He came in here to sleep with me. But I screamed, and when he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me, but as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story his wife had told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me, he burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was in there in the prison, the Lord was with him, and he showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. 
So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. The Cupbearer and the Baker, Genesis 40. Sometime later, the Cupbearer and the Baker of the king of Egypt offended their master. The king of Egypt, Pharaoh, was angry with his two officials the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the same prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. After they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected, and so he asked Pharaoh's officials, who were in custody with him in his master's house, Why do you look so sad today? We both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, Do not, inter do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream. He said to him, In my dream I saw a vine in front of me, and on the vine were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, squeezed them into the Pharaoh's cup, and put the cup in his hand. This is what it means, Joseph said to him. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position, and you will be put as Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you used to do when you were his cupbearer. But when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I have done nothing to deserve being put in a dungeon. When the chief baker saw that Joseph had given a favorable interpretation to uh, he said to Joseph, I too had a dream. On my head were three baskets of bread. In the top basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating them out of the baskets on my head. This was what that dream means, Joseph said. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head and impale your body on a pole, and the birds will eat away your flesh. Now the third day was Pharaoh's birthday, and he gave a feast for all his officials. He lifted up the heads of the chief cupbearer and the chief baker in the presence of his officials. He restored the chief cupbearer to his position so that he once again put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he impaled the chief baker, just as Joseph had said to them in his interpretation. The chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph, and he forgot him. That was Genesis 39 through 40. 
Now we will be turning to Matthew 11. Jesus and John the Baptist, Matthew 11. After Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's plate palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, I tell you, the more uh, and more than a prophet, this is the one to whom it was written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subject to violence, and violent people have been raiding it. For all the prophets and the low, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Whoever has ears, let them hear. To what can I compare in this generation? They are like the children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. From John... Uh, for John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man comes eating and drinking, and they say he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend to, of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her, her deeds. Woe to uninterpreted towns! Or woe to unrepentant towns. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazan. Woe to you, Bethesda. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago and in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And you, Carponium, will you be lifted to the heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you, that it will be more bearable 
for Sodom on that day of judgment than for you, the Father revealed in the Son. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father Lord of heaven, the earth, because uh, the heaven and the earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to the children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those who, to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for yourself, for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that was Matthew 11, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Genesis 44, I'm sorry, 41 through 42, and Matthew 12, 1 through 23. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. So I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Thank you so very much for tuning into the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. This is Shenandoah Briscoe. I have enjoyed being your messenger of the Word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So come back and see us again tomorrow because God will and will be here. And we hope that you are too.